<laughs> oh, that's a lot of dogs in the way for this very important question about pool coping. Hey, ask the question. It's it's a free answer. They can handle the dog in the in the picture. If they were paying for the answer, we'd make it nice and clean. All right, coping insulation. Came across your website that you might be able to answer a question. We are doing a pool remodel and installing drop down base coping. The waterline tile was placed first and no space was left for the coping. Is it okay to install the coping on top of the waterline tile or should they abut each other? Hope this question makes sense. So my sense or my understanding of what you're saying is a drop down coping is that is that the profile of the coping while sitting on the beam then drops down in front of the tile somewhat. I'm, I'm not sure why that would be a problem and, and what kind of space could have been left other than would they would you have wanted them to drop the tile line so that there was a half inch or one inch above the tile before the top of the beam. I don't think that that there would be any issue whatsoever with the coping face of the coping dropping over the top of the tile that would actually be an ideal situation i would think so do you worry about ground movement at all not in that particular case because if the ground is moving the pool shell is moving if we're talking about a the the space between the tile and the coping uh there shouldn't be movement there not to say that there wouldn't be but any movement there would cause you know would would cause failure so it should be all one consistent piece and if it's if it's tile grouted onto the beam and the drop down coping looping down over the top of the tile i don't see that that should be any any problem other than cosmetically how do you grout that joint and keep the grout on uh, upside down under the coping briefly uh, but I think that would be something that'd be solvable so um, m my thought would be it would be perfectly fine